What's the word, y'all? The Knicks are 39 and 27, and it's got a lot of us wondering, could they be more dangerous than we anticipated? Nine game win streak, and those last two wins are so improbable that you got, you got to tip your hat to it. Yesterday, they go into the TD Garden without Jalen Brunson, who's been ridiculous. We're going to talk about him. And they win a double overtime game against the Boston Celtics. This man, Emmanuel, quickly played 50 plus minutes. He got a little bit of rest in the first half, and then after that, from the start of the third quarter to the double overtime ended, he played every single second. Career highs across the board, so shout out to him. Julius Randle, though there were so many bodies can thrown at him, handled himself at least decent enough to help them get this win, and they beat the Boston Celtics, who again are one of the best teams in basketball. And then we go one game before that, they in Miami. And, and Julius Randle gets ripped up, Tyler Hero go for a layup, boom. Now they down. Jalen Brunson, there's no time else, 20 seconds on the clock, Jalen Brunson like, chill, you know what I'm saying, we got time, let's hit this last shot, let's win this game. They throw two bodies at, at Jalen Brunson, he get it out of his hands to Julius Randle, Julius Randle gets ripped up again, but this time he recovers. Another body gets thrown at Julius Randle, and he ends up taking a heavily contested three, and it goes in. It is so crazy, that sequence was so crazy, that they got Mike Breen to bring out the very, very rare double bang. You know when Steph Curry pulled up from right beyond half court? Against the OKC Thunder back in 2016 or something? It's, it's, it's not a lot of double bangs in NBA history, y'all. He got one because that's how crazy of a win that was. And that is the team that this team has been since... Since Christmas, they were a 500 team around Christmas. And here they are as the five seed. It feels pretty pretty secure that they're going to stay within four or five you know it seems like this matchup between them and the Cleveland Cavaliers of course a lot can happen between now and the end of the season but like I don't see the Brooklyn Nets taking it and I don't see the Cavs fall uh, far too too below that so it's just it feels like the Cleveland Cavaliers New York Knicks series is going to happen it's just a matter of who gonna have home court advantage and boy that series gonna be a dog fight of course if it happens if it happens um let's talk about Jalen Brunson because of course he didn't play last night but he has been so ridiculous that even though he did not make an all-star appearance, w once we get to the end of the season and the ballots are in from these voters and stuff, Jalen Brunson is going to get all NBA votes for the guard position. And that is saying a lot, considering how crazy the guard position is right now when he comes to top end talents. Now again, I'm not saying he's going he's gonna to end up making all NBA because I don't necessarily know exactly, but, but he's in the conversation. A lot of the success that the Knicks have had have come since the turn of the calendar year. So since 2023 has started, Jalen Brunson in 27 games averaging 28 points per game. We're talking six assists, four rebounds, 51% from the field, 45.5% from three, and 80% from the free throw line. That's insane. Before this little this little stretch, he was averaging like 20 points per game, and his shooting splits were down. So what happens since the turn of the calendar year for him to not just elevate his play, but like go above and beyond? Major thing that sticks out to me is his ability to get to the free throw line. It's gone up since the beginning of the season. And also his overall shot attempts. He was averaging like 14 and a half shots per game before the turn of the calendar year. Now it's up to 20. So he's, he's taking more shots. Ultimately, hitting more shots and get into the line more. And I remember when Jalen Brunson signed his contract. I ain't forgot the amount of tweets that I saw after I praised it, um, saying that it's an overpay. And I, I don't know how you can even defend that opinion anymore, considering how good he has been and how good the Knicks have been. We exaggerate all the time, right? We exaggerate heavily on this channel or just an NBA fandom in general. The Knicks ain't had a great point guard since 30 years ago. Guys, that's damn near facts. Jalen Brunson is the best point guard the Knicks have had in such a very long time. And he is a testament to how much good guard play can overall just change a locker room, change the success of a team. Because, like, the year that they made the playoffs last was a couple years ago when they surprised the world. Alfred Payton was their starting point guard. And he won, he won terrible, but he ain't no Jalen Brunson. The, the upgrade from Alfred Payton two years ago to Jalen Brunson is so large. And even a year that they didn't make it last year. Uh, Kimba Walker was their starting point guard for half the season. And then Alec Burks was a starting point guard for the second half. That's that's one of the reasons why it wasn't great. I mean, another reason was Julius Randle kind of fell back into the old version of him. And now he's back to playing a great, great basketball. But a lot of things are clicking right now. And it's perfect. The Josh Hart acquisition has been amazing. He was just in, in Portland and he wouldn't take any threes. The man genuinely did not want to take a three-point shot. If he was wide open, it was contested, it was one second on the shot clock, he going to try to get a dribble and, and take a mini instead of taking a three. And since coming over to the Knicks, he's shooting 60% from three. Um, <laughs> I don't expect that to be the case for the rest of the season plus the postseason, but he is just hitting his shots now. I can't even say unsung heroes anymore uh, because yesterday, I mean, uh, Emmanuel quickly got a ton of flowers after the performance he put on. But even before that, 
Emmanuel Quickly has been such an impactful player. And I remember before the trade deadline, there were a lot of rumors around Emmanuel Quickly. They were listening to calls, trying to upgrade here and there. And it is a blessing that they did not trade that man away because he's in conversations for six men in a year. It's like him. It's like Malcolm Brogdon. It's like Norman Powell. These are the guys that are in conversation. Emmanuel Quickly has a legitimate chance of winning that award. That's how impactful he is. And usually, traditionally, six man of the year goals, and when it comes to the guards, it's mostly about, oh, he's going to come off the bench, he's going to give you 18 points per game. It's the Lou Williams, it's the Jordan Clarks, it's the these type of dudes. Emmanuel Quickly can do that, but where he is really impactful is the fact that he gets onto that floor and he is going to defend his ass off. And again, I don't watch college ball. But I don't remember that being his his archetype coming into the NBA, where people saw him as a dude that was going to be a hard nosed defender and overall just an impactful player like that. He's that and more. The turn in the calendar year for him sees him go to 15.7 points per game, 50, 40, 80 shooting splits as well. And he went from early in the season where Thibodeau was playing him 19 minutes here, then 26 minutes here, and then again since the turn of the calendar season, uh, bro has been averaging 33 minutes per game. He has completely earned the trust of Tom Thibodeau, which is hard to do. I saw here in Chicago for years. It is hard to earn the trust of Tom Thibodeau. But you see that from him and Kenny Freer all-star uh, uh, Quinn Grimes, that if you can defend, and these are dudes that don't make a ton of mistakes. I know that quickly, um, not quickly, Grimes ended up fouling Jalen Brunson at the end of regulation, and that helped it go into overtime. But these are dudes that don't make a ton of mistakes. And if you don't make mistakes and you play great defense, that's a recipe to get into the the good graces of Tom Thibodeau. The team is so weird. I'm, I'm looking at their, their games play. Um, from December 4th to December 20th, they went on a seven-game win streak, and then they backed that up with a five-game losing streak. They went on a four-game win streak. They went on a five-game losing streak. Th this team has been hella unpredictable. But again, recently, they haven't planned their best basketball together. And you know what I was really watching for yesterday? Of course, I've been watching and seeing them on, the, at that point, eight-game win streak. One guy that's been under the microscope a little bit more than normal is R.J. Barrett. And I was thinking to myself, okay, there's no Jalen Brunson. This is the time for R.J. to kind of showcase some other stuff. Because let's be real. I'm Knicks fans. I'm only speaking for myself, a guy that's watching neutrally. You might have a different opinion, and I respect it. But he has been underwhelming for me when I watch him. If I remember correctly, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to double check it. During this streak, he hasn't really closed out games. You have four minutes here in the fourth quarter, then Josh Hart came on and quickly came on. So he's been a dude that's been playing great minutes over the th three and a half quarters. And then they sub him out and they put the better players in. Like this one, he played three minutes in the fourth quarter. And then Josh Hart and quickly played an entire 12 minutes. You know, So I was looking at RJ like, okay. This, this is your time to shine. There's no Jalen Brunson, and you're looked at to be the third best player. Now you're number two. Let me see you be number two. Yesterday, that was fine. He did most of his damage in the first half. I don't think he scored in any of the overtimes. Um, but, but, you know, he is an extreme wild card at this point. A couple years ago, he shot 40% from three, and that, that three-point shooting is pretty much all, all gone for some reason. He just... I mean, people thought it was a fluke in the moment. If you go look at that playoff series, they were throwing two bodies at Julius Randle, daring R.J. Barrett to shoot a shot, daring him to. And I'm going to be honest with you, if I am coaching against the Knicks in the playoff series, I'm kind of doing that same thing. You saw it work somewhat with Julius Randle yesterday, where they kept throwing bodies at him and it flustered him enough. Luckily, he had some other people step up like Emmanuel quickly. But if I'm coaching against this team, I'm throwing bodies at Julius, and I'm letting R.J. Barrett beat us. And this is the time, because the team is good, where he needs to show that he can – or you might end up in a situation in the playoff series where Tom Thibodeau's going to do whatever it takes to win a series. And if that means not playing RJ down the stretch, so be it. Because quickly hit that shot. And Josh Hart is shooting 60% for three since we traded for him. He'll hit that shot. I mean, you look at Tom Thibodeau-led teams throughout the course of his career. They always hung their hat on the defensive side of the ball. That's where Tom Thibodeau is. He's a defensive-minded coach. So you look at this New York Knicks team, you're like, okay, they winning all these games down the stretch. They playing great defense, which is true. I mean, the defense is cool. I think it's like 11th in the league before last night. I, I ain't looked since last night. Um, but the last time I checked, since, since Christmas, remember, since Christmas, they're the second-best offense in all of basketball. A Tom Thibodeau-led team. Tom Thibodeau let second in offense is unheard of for them. And the only team that was above them was the Sacramento Kings. So we know they just run a gun. Boy, that's the most fun team in basketball, if you ask me. But the, but the Knicks are right behind them offensively. That is such a wild thing to put into your mind, man. This Knicks team, their offense is elite. And I'm telling you all of this. Second best offense in basketball since, the, since Christmas, all of that. They don't even shoot threes like that. They're not a great three-point shooter team, y'all. 
Somehow they figured out a way to have an elite level offense with being a below average three point shooting team. So if you haven't been watching Knicks lately, I highly recommend it. It is great basketball, especially if Jalen Brunson is healthy and playing. Um, shout out to him, man. Y'all deserve it. Every single year, me and Pierre, my cousin Pierre, uh, we, we make a bet. Who going to have a better record, Knicks or Bulls? We make it $250. And I'm about to pay this man another two hundred and fifty dollars. They won two years ago. We got our revenge last season. We, I'm running it back every time. I believe in my bulls. Unless we sell this off season, then I'm just I'm gonna hold my money. I'm not just giving money away. All right, let me know what you think about the Knicks. Are you a believer in them being a team that can muck it up come playoff time, or is this just a crazy run?